Thank you very much for joining me for this Ryder Cup 2021 pre-tournament guide featuring the brand new beautiful Whistling Straits course. In this video, I'm going to walk you through all the different shots that I know so far that I'm going to use. And we're going to talk about all the different alternate shots and ball choices, which are going to be really important in this tournament. Since we're all using the fixed clubs, the kind of ball that you choose can set you apart from the competition. So now might be the time to just sort of step it up a little bit. Use those balls that are languishing in your inventory. I'm excited for the video. I hope you are too. Let's get into it. Welcome to hole number one here on this Ryder Cup 2021 edition. I'm trying to figure out the best way to play it here, even with a tailwind. When you play it up to the left, you're, you're leaving yourself a decently long shot. I think getting to this little pad here on the right-hand side with maximum topspin, I give it a little bit of left spin into that left or right wind, seeing if we can't come up with something, something we can work with. And I wouldn't be showing you this video clip if I didn't think we had done so. So max over power. I've done this with a great right and a great left. Both seem to work all the same. It's just a matter of clipping this rough and bouncing up and out into the short stuff. So just like that, a one bouncer is definitely something we can work with. Leaves us on the fairway and sets it up for a second shot here. So I don't know the elevations for sure. Don't hold me to that 100%, but I know that we're in max wood range here, and I'm giving it four up. You see, I've got about a half a bar of topspin there. I'm going to regret not using that on this shot. I do think that we could come in short here. If you can get a little bit more distance on your drive, you might want to play it to the left of this rough with a little bit of right spin so that you can get down closer. Uh, maybe some people using a power five ball might even have a rough bump option here as well. So, you know, just gives you a way that we can get it to green in a couple of strokes here, but not to say that we can't push this one a little bit harder. Uh, but as you can see, with a bit of tailwind and that extra bar on top, we're good to go. Hole number two, it's a par three, and we find ourselves with a pretty long one here. We're playing this with a wood club, and I've got a Quasar ball. I set this up with three back, one and a half left. And as you can see, there's a lot of curved landing positions here. There's a very clear and obvious rough bump there that could be explored as well. However, I found this little spot right between the rough and the bunker to be quite consistent. Now, I would actually, in this wind, think about playing this maybe with just one left. Get rid of that half bar uh, as well because this wind is pushing us right to left. However, this is a nice, decent landing position there, which gives us a consistent rollout and gets us really close to the pin. Good luck. Special shout out to my friend, David Harris, the one and only Shinobi. Keep killing the game, bro. Much love. Let's get into the video. All right, so hole number three, this is a long par five. I'm bringing a Zerk here, but because of this headwind, we're not even and I'm looking at it here. It's going to be really tough to get across that gap with these clubs. I tried it. That's why I'm doing it the way I'm going to show you. So headwind, I recommend going left side. Um, you might be able to make it across if you've got a power five ball that has more wind resistance. So by all means, you know, this isn't the only way, but this is an option. I'm going to show you the, uh, the long bomb here right after this. So we're going to use the driver, max top, max over power, push it all the way up all that good stuff get as much distance as possible on this shot and we're going to get it up here give ourselves a nice little look now because of all that water in the middle we have to continue playing down the left side because as you can see we're nowhere close right and if we'd played to the right it would have been a similar outcome so i'm just laying it up here couple back couple right just trying to keep it to the right side of this fairway i don't really know what i'm adjusting here i was like i eh, just give it a little bit I kind of looked at it like kind of sniper type, you know, one-to-one -one type of situation. Uh, really, just a layup shot here to give us a short iron opportunity. This, of course, is the least ideal way to play this hole as far as albatross chance uh, or even getting that eagle. However, if you're playing this in a rookie bracket that does not have many experienced players, you're still going to do better off just with a clean birdie here on this very difficult hole. Now... In this tailwind, at least four backspin. As you can see, there's not much ball guide and not much room to work with here. You might even need to use four and a half back here. Not really 100% sure. And I adjusted this like around 10%, but 
Uh, I think 20 would probably be a more likely outcome here. So a clean little adjustment, nothing too much. And unfortunately, we don't quite get that adjustment correct here with these ridiculous but fun for the tournament clubs. Needed a bit more there, but hey, coming in nice gives us a chance. I'll show you the long shot now. All right, hole three once again. This time we've got a little bit more tailwind to work with. So for the drive, you can actually use your wood or your driver, max back, max right. Uh, I keep a tiny bit of right curl here. This is actually the wood that we're hitting with, even though I recommended the driver. Same idea, really. The shot is very much the same. You're just going to lay it up to the corner here and set ourselves up, hopefully, clear across that large water gap in the middle. You're going to have your wood club here. And as you can see, we're just to the edge here. So with that tailwind, I know Max is going to give me a big hit. So maximum backspin. I use Max left here just to get it into the wind direction. And we're going to give it Max OP. The thing about this one, obviously, it's just a matter of getting it to stick over somewhere on or right next to the green. On the green is preferable. We didn't quite stick there, but hey, short little chip here, especially with those apps being updated, should be no big deal. If you find that you're getting value from this video, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe now so you don't miss out on any of our future Golf Clash content. Let's get back to the video. Hole number four looks to be a reasonably straightforward par three. Now I played this shot at about 10% elevation. That's why you see me listing it at 40% max because we were severely under adjusted here. Max backspin, I'm going right at the hole. I would love to have a backspin boost ball and give this like another bar of backspin or so. I think it would be better to bounce on the fringe or even on the green. So keep that in mind, you know. Um, otherwise, you know, pretty direct approach here. Nothing crazy. Just going to be a matter of dialing it in with those limited time tournament wins. You see there we needed a little bit more, but I think we definitely got this one with the backspin approach. Hole number five, the second par five, is setting up more and more like a real golf tournament. Getting eagle just on this par five alone will be quite challenging, especially if you have a little bit of win like this. And I intentionally chose to show... This path, this is basically as as rough as it's going to get. We're bouncing it with max top spin. I'm using a power three ball here, and we're going to take that driver up and onto that second patch of fairway. Now, as you can see, perhaps with a nice tailwind, power five ball especially, you're going to get this thing to travel up to that third fairway. If you can do that, you're going to give yourself a much nicer shot into the green and potentially get it to the green in two. However, this path here is going to need to be taken by many people, and I predict the playdemic will not be nice to us uh, and give us a nice tailwind on every single shot. So be prepared, be aware, kind of get, lets you see where we're going to be. Once again, max top, max left. We are just trying to get it over there because of the headwind fighting us here every step of the way. I decide to just not even, don't even flirt with that rough. Just play it safely to the side here. And I gave it, you know, I took about 25% uh, off of the overpower. I gave about three quarters there. I wouldn't want to go too, too much more here because as you could see, we definitely could roll up into that rough. Uh, but this is going to set us up for a fair effort. Now, I played this shot. Uh, I forget the exact adjustment, but honestly, it was about... About one to one, I believe. Let's take a look here. A couple bars of backspin probably could have used... Only one with this strong headwind, but I think two bars is a reasonable place to work when you don't really know the ball guide. Set it up, you know, a little bit short. Uh, trying to account for that missing ball guide. So 4.2 win. What do we pull here? Oh, I uh, went by like just about half, right? So I just a little bit, just about two. Probably need to use just a bit more into this strong wind. However, luckily, it looks like our beloved adjustment apps are all getting updated just about got that eagle good luck r4 sixth hole it's time to get back to doing what we do best that's rough bump and titan ball on the drive giving it you know two to four top spin here depending on the wind if you've got a strong tailwind here just take it easy you don't want to go through it i am giving it just a bit of overpower there to compensate for that uh headwind 
ideally just getting it nicely down to the end here somewhere where these flags on the right are looking fine but obviously more room to work with there ultimately the idea for me here is i want to work with this rough because of the drive distance you're going to see here in two shakes when i move my landing position i'm really close to maximum distance if i remember come on baldy there we go baby uh, I don't know, but anyway, maybe not. Maybe we're mid, but I really just thought, you know what? This looks like, feels like rough bump territory. So I gave it four and a half top spin here and I adjust this shot around 10% max. And as you can see, it's a little bit of a hill that I'm hitting on. I probably should play this with the left spin and a little bit more to the right where it's flatter. Uh, looking at it here now with you as we are reviewing the shot, but bounce, roll, Oh, so close, baby. I think I'm going to keep working with this one on this hole. We'll see you on hole number seven. Hole number seven is our final par three. I'm setting this one up. We're looking at this rough bump. It's obvious. It's screaming to me, but the wind is not having it. So uh, what we could do there, we could change to a higher power ball. So we're not in between clubs or we could just work with a little more reasonable shot, a little bit of side spin here and bounce it in with the long iron. I played that basically just because of the way this set up and I'm not about using a bunch of fancy balls, especially in practice when we're still learning the course. Uh, your balls, your skill level, you do what you gotta do, boo. So easy does it here, adjusting approximately 20% elevation on this shot. However, that's gonna change depending on the wind don't forget it. Easy does it, though. This is a very viable and replicable path. Good luck. Hole number eight, R4, and the pain keeps on painting. I bring it a power three ball here and giving it maximum top spin. Um, just bombing it right down the middle here. As much power as you can muster. Again, use a power five ball. If that's what you've got, baby. Bring the heat and just get as much distance on this drive as you can. I intentionally hit uh, great there. Mm -hmm. Just to show you that it's a safe, wide open fairway that gives you a little bit of room for error. However, great left will bring us a little further away from our intended target. Nothing massive, but changes the angle of approach a little bit once again if we had real clubs here a little rough bump roll it up but i think it's important to know that you want to use a good amount of backspin on this shot uh just looking to see what i gave as my final amount about two and a half backspin here coming into a light but a cross tailwind if you will 10% is sort of a, a working number right now we may actually be playing this one in negative elevation you know, because it is quite a bit physically uphill. It's really just going to depend on the wind angulation. Could be negative 20 here, um, but in a strong crosswind, we might play this higher elevation. So it all depends, guys. you got to work it out as we go. But as you can see, that's a nice weight, a nice line. Get that zoom in. We have a chance here. We can make these when it counts in the tournament. Hole number nine, and we have the final hole of the tournament. Now, quite often, hole nine is the hardest hole of the tournament. Titan ball, driver, max top, and we're trying to clear this gap. If we have headwind here, it's going to be much, much harder. You might be ha prepared to bring a power five ball here. Um, difficult usually at the end, but I think this hole actually gives us something to work with. We're approaching the green with an iron here, just so long as we get a good amount of distance. I showed you that drive because it was one of the only times I actually clipped a rough. So you can actually get more distance here with an even better drive. But I think it's important to see that even with clipping the rough, it puts us in just fine position. Now, hard to check the rough bump when you have no ball guide. So I gave it four and a half back, max left, a couple bars there, and it gives us a little bit more fairway to work with this position. I'm working as a reference point of that second bounce on the fringe. And, you know, we're just giving this probably more like 15% is where you want to play. Those elevations, none of them are set in stone yet. We're going to have to really work to practice with the actual tournament wins, but the paths that we're taking are not going to change much, except they're going to end up in the bottom of the hole. Thank you so much for joining me in this Ryder Cup 2021 rookie walkthrough video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe now so you don't miss out on any of my future Golf Clash content. Good luck in the tournament and thank you for watching.